Hey folks, give me just a second here while I get set up. Uh, seems to be not working again. Oh, well. Okay, I'll go ahead and get started here. Okay, so welcome to Rainmakers Live. If you've been here before, you've already heard this, but just in case you're seeing this for the first time, the reason for this meeting is to teach you the latest and most effective customer acquisition skills and strategies to make money for yourself and others. Learning how to drive customers is just about the most valuable skill there is. It happens every Thursday or every Tuesday rather at 6:30 p.m. Eastern at dominatethemarketplace.net slash rainmakers. We also have a Facebook group too, Facebook dot com slash group slash rainmakers live cool so let's go ahead and get into it so today we are going to go over the the 16 word sales letter now over the last few weeks what we've been getting into are copywriting principles of how to how to, to write persuasively essentially that's what copywriting is and so a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, understanding, like writing in a way that's easily understood and doesn't take effort to understand. And then the next week, we talked about how to build emotion, how to make build people's desire or or rather increase people's desire, a desire that's already there and, and direct it towards the thing that you're offering. And then last week, we talked about proof and logic, like how to how to prove your product and get people to believe that it will work for them. So today we're going to go over a copywriting framework, which is how to like how to structure a particular piece of copywriting, in particular a sales letter. Now a sales letter is just what it sounds like. It's a letter that's written to sell something. And it could be actually a letter that you send somebody in the mail. It could be an email. It could just be the text that you have on a page, or it could be what's called a video sales letter, which is you reading a script into a into a video, right? A video recording of the script. And it doesn't have to be you reading it. Somebody else could be reading it. It could be AI. It could just be text on a screen, right? But those are all examples of sales letters. And the idea is to get somebody interested enough in whatever it is that you offer that they are willing to actually buy it. So the 16 word sales letter is based on a book by Evaldo Albuquerque, who is a, a famous copywriter who, um, who who wrote the book is called the 16 word sales letter. I don't know why he calls it 16 words. It's not really 16 words, but it's like 16 words that summarize it or something. Um, I, I don't remember, but anyway, so this guy is, writes letters in the financial niche. So he he sells financial newsletters, essentially, and he sold something like $120 million worth of financial newsletters. Now, how this applies to your business and marketing in general or your clients' businesses, if you work with clients, is going to be a little different depending on what kind of business you're in. But you'll see, you'll see at least part of this will apply and you'll you'll be able to see where it applies uh, for your business. So like for this, 
it's selling financial newsletters, for example, you really want to convince people of the expertise and, and make them trust in the value of the sales letter. With some kinds of marketing for some products, you really don't have to do that. Like if you sell, I think I used the example last time, if you sell hamburgers, well, there's not a lot of trust you got to build for somebody to buy a hamburger. If you sell coffee, there's not a lot of trust. Or if you sell car parts, there's there's probably not a lot of trust you have to build. So you're not going to have to do all of these steps. So use your judgment for like which steps are necessary for your business and which steps are not. And also, this is specifically for a sales letter, but you can use, use these frameworks and these principles in other pieces of marketing and sales content as well. So you can use it in ads, for example. You can use it in emails. You can use it like emails that aren't specifically getting someone to, to buy something. You can use it if, if you're just trying to get somebody to, to opt in or to book a call. You can use it in actual sales. Like if you're talking to somebody on the phone, you can use it as well. So think about also like how th this isn't only for a sales letter. This is a sales letter framework that can be used in a whole bunch of other ways. Okay. So the, the biggest thing that this framework centers around is what he calls the one belief that there is one thing that you need to get your prospect to believe in order for them to buy for, from you. And the one belief is that the, the new opportunity is the key to get my desire and the only way to get it is through the through this product, through your product, right? So there are three key parts in here that I want to I want to highlight. So first is the new opportunity. The second is desire, and the third is product, right? So the desire, the person already has the desire. So maybe the person wants to make more money. Maybe they want to lose weight. Maybe they want to, to find a date. Maybe they want to get married. Maybe they want to eat your hamburger and feel full. You know, maybe they just want to enjoy their day, whatever it is. The desire is, is already with them. Right. So you don't have to do that. You just have to identify it. Like, what does your target customer want? And then in order to get that desire, you want to introduce a new opportunity. So this is something that is a way for them to get their desire that they haven't thought of before. And then in order to to make use of that new opportunity, they need to buy your product. So you're actually you're having to sell them on two two beliefs here, essentially. Right. So the first belief is in the opportunity. The second belief is in your product. So, for example, my YouTube ads product, I could say that, well, the company already desires to get a steady flow of leads into the business so that they can grow the business so that they can make however much money they're trying to make. Right. So the desire is already there. And so I can say my new opportunity is to use YouTube ads because most businesses have not tried using YouTube ads. They might've tried industry publications. They might've tried Facebook. They might've tried advertising on in the newspaper or the radio. Maybe they tried Instagram, you know, whatever. So I'm saying YouTube is a new opportunity. Now, when I say new, it doesn't mean that it, it only came into existence today. It's just new to them or something about it is new in that they haven't seen it exactly before. So the first thing before you even start talking, before you even mention that you have a product, you got to get them sold on the new opportunity, right? Because if, if somebody doesn't believe that the YouTube ads is the way for them to get their desire to scale their business, 
then they're not going to buy my YouTube ads consulting service. They're not going to buy what I have that is using YouTube ads, right? Because they're not even bought in on the opportunity yet. So you got to sell them on the opportunity first, and then you sell them on the product, right? So once I have them believing that YouTube ads are in fact the way for them to reach their business goals, then I can say, oh, and the way to get use YouTube ads in order to reach your business goals is by my product, my service, right? So you can think of, you can plug this into a lot of different, a lot of different products that have been very successful over the years. Like a good example is Proactive. If you remember Proactive, it was an acne medication. There was a new, well, the desire was to get rid of acne, right? And the new opportunity was that instead of just using one cream that did one thing, you're going to use like three different creams in conjunction that would all like attack a different part of the acne, something like that. I'm probably explaining that completely wrong, but there is some new, new way that they explained that you could get rid of your acne, right? So once they made you believe that, okay, you have to attack acne from these three different angles all at the same time, and then you'll get rid of your acne. And then well, Proactive is the only product that does that, right? So at that point, they they believe in the opportunity, so they're much more likely to buy into the product. And what you want is, you want them to believe your product is the only way, ideally, if that's not possible and it's not always possible, it could be just the best way. So like the best way to get this is through my product. So with my YouTube ads example, um, for example, like my, my, I'm not the only person that runs YouTube ads that like does that as a service, right? So they, it might be difficult if they already know that there's other people that do this, it might be difficult for them to believe that going through me is the only way, but I can show them, I can differentiate myself and show them that going through me is the best way. So that's, you know, that works too. But if you can be the only way, then that's ideal, because then they don't have a choice. Okay. So from there, once we got the one belief set, then we want to, we're going to go through a series of questions that are questions that your prospect is naturally going to think in their mind of like, um, in order, the, the questions they're, they're going to have to be answered in a satisfactory way for anybody to be willing to buy your product. So, start with question one is, how is this different from everything else I've seen? So, chances are, people have seen a lot of claims that they may or may not have believed They've probably tried things in the past. They've they've probably, if they're still trying to get something, like if they're still trying to get this desire, maybe they've had that desire for 10 years and they have not been able to get it. So if they've tried various things, then you want to show how your thing is different from all the things that they've tried before that have failed. And you want to show it how it's different than all the things that they've seen before but have not believed in. Right, because if they've already rejected something once, if they've already seen like somebody presented them a new opportunity and they didn't believe in it, well, then they've already got this belief in their head that this thing doesn't work. And so you have to show that you're different. So for example, my YouTube ads mastery program is showing people how if they wanna make money online, they can do it through running YouTube ads for businesses, right? Because you're providing a valuable service. Well, a lot of people have seen SMMA courses or, or people saying that you should start a social media marketing agency. That's what SMMA stands for. And everybody that's doing that just about is teaching Facebook ads. So you go and run Facebook ads for businesses. And so a lot of people have tried it. Um, and now it's gotten very competitive. So a lot of people are trying to do that kind of business. 
And so when you go and talk to a business owner and say, hey, I want to run your Facebook ads for you, chances are the business owner has heard that a thousand times. And so what you can do if you know YouTube ads is say, no, this is a new opportunity. I'm going to run YouTube ads for you. Right? So that's actually, this is a little bit meta here because if you are my client and I, I teach you how to run YouTube ads and how to do this system, then I'm giving you a new opportunity to present to your prospective clients. And this new opportunity that I'm giving you to present is a new opportunity for me selling to you, right? Because everybody else is selling this Facebook ads idea, which is super saturated and competitive. And so I'm saying, no, this is a new opportunity. You can do something similar, but with YouTube ads, so it's not nearly as competitive, right? So I'm showing how this is different from the thing that you've already seen. Cool. Give me a give me a one in the chat if that makes sense, guys. Cool, thank you. So, okay, so let's get into question two. They, these don't necessarily have to be in order, by the way, but if you can get them at least close to in order, it helps, right? Because if somebody's, that's kind of the first thing on people's mind is like, have I seen this before? And if the answer is yes, then that's kind of like they're satisfied, they don't need to see anymore and they stop reading or they stop watching your ad or whatever it is. So that's question number one. Question two is what's in it for me? So this is what we went over last week. Basically, this is, or no, it wasn't last week. It was two weeks ago. This is the emotion. This is what are the, what are the pleasures that I'm going to, that this thing, this opportunity is going to get for me, right? Am I going to look better? Am I going to get more dates? Am I going to find the love of my life? Am I going to make more money? If I'm, am I going to be happier? Am I going to have less stress? Like what, what pleasures are they going to get? And then also what pains can you get rid of? Right? So can I get rid of the person's feelings of insecurity or the being in debt or whatever being lonely, whatever pain they're dealing with, it's like, I want to, I want to show that I can get them pleasure and avoid them from having pain. And if I, it may be one or the other, but if I can do both, then both is ideal. So what's in it for me? That's really important. And you want to, you want to kind of find as much as you can there, like dig into how all the ways that this thing can benefit the person. So that brings us to question number three, which is how do I know this is real? So this is very similar to what we went over in the last lesson, right? So you start with the emotions that you get them interested in the thing. You get, you, you're firing up that desire for this solution, but then you say, hey, I can get you whatever thing that you've always wanted. And people think, yeah, that's awesome, but how do I know this is real? Like, why should I believe it? And so that's where you start bringing in the proof, right? So that's where you tell them how it worked for you. You might tell them how it worked for other people. You might explain how the mechanism works, which actually we'll get into that in a little bit later. You have like celebrities saying that it works. You have, or not exactly celebrities, but like people who are who are believable. So I gave the example last week of, of Warren Buffett says that this is what you should invest in. Well, it's believable because people know who Warren Buffett is and they generally trust his advice when it comes to in investing. So I'm not going to go too far into that because we went really in detail with that last week, but it's important that they know that this is real. You're not just some like you you made this up and it's all a lie. And so you have screenshots and news headlines and that kind of thing, all, all helpful. Okay, fourth question. What's holding me back? Right, so chances are 
the person didn't just have this desire today, they probably had it for a while. So why have they not been able to get their desire? So what is, what, what basically you want to answer the question, what's the real problem? And ideally you want to, you want to specify a problem that they have not thought about before. Right. And it should be related to your new opportunity. So with the proactive example, the acne medication, the real problem is that you haven't been able to get rid of your acne or the real reason you haven't gotten rid of your acne is because all the acne products on the market are only targeting one part of the acne instead of targeting all three. Right. That's the real problem. Now, with the real problem, you never want to put the blame on the person, right? Like the, the reader, the person that, that's watching. So like for a weight loss offer, well, the real problem is that you've been stuffing yourself with donuts and haven't gone to the gym for, for three years. Don't say that. <laughs> that. That's not helpful to them. It's just gonna make them feel guilty and they're gonna feel bad and they're not gonna wanna read anymore and they're not gonna wanna buy your product, right? So if, if in, a lot of times it's true. It is like it is because you've been eating donuts and, and not going to the gym or whatever. So if that's the case, like I I really don't like to to lie about anything in marketing. I mean, people do a lot, but I to me, yeah, like I it just doesn't sit well with me. So I, I would rather if you're gonna actually if it's if it really is the person's fault. Find a way to narrow it down to like, why? What about, like, why is it that you've been eating donuts three times a day and haven't gone to the gym? Like, is it, if it's like lack of motivation or it's lack of discipline, well, why? Why does that person have a lack of discipline? Is it just that like some people were, were born with the discipline gene and some people were born with the lazy gene? I don't think it's that at all. So if I'm going to say that it's, oh, it's a lack of discipline. Well, why is there a lack of discipline? And then you can go into the psychological causes of that, that, oh, maybe your lack of, you have a lack of discipline because in the deepest part of you, you, you don't even believe it's going to work, right? So why are you going to go to the gym and give up your favorite foods and all this if you don't actually believe it's going to work? So really, it's a matter of belief. And that in if you can change that belief, then you can change your results. So that's, I mean, that would be if I was going to sell something that was related to helping them with their mindset. So maybe I'm a personal trainer and the way that I differentiate myself from the other personal trainers is, look, I don't just tell you to exercise and show you what exercise is to do. I actually get into the deep psychological basis of why it is that you have this problem in the first place right so identify the real problem and and as little as possible like as much as possible don't make it their fault and even if it is something like well yeah you're not motivated but it's because of these underlying psychological factors that nobody told you about so you couldn't be expected to know about it so it's not your fault <laughs> Right. So eventually, even if it is actually them, they're doing, it's not exactly their fault. There's a there's a fine line there where you don't want to point the finger and accuse them and make them feel lesser uh, because that's not going to work for you. So does that make sense that I feel like I was kind of rambling there? Give me a, a two in the chat if that makes sense. Or if not, like, feel free to ask questions. Cool, cool, I appreciate it. Um, okay, so what's holding me back? What's the real problem? So, um, right, so the real problem is maybe, and maybe like for me with my YouTube ads program, I can say that the real problem is that you're trying to get into this Facebook ads game too late. Like it would have worked for you if you got in six years ago, but now is no longer six years ago. So that's the real problem is that there's too much competition. You got in too late. Okay. 
So let's, this one is related is who or what is to blame, right? Remember, I just said that you don't want to blame the person themselves. So you want to say who or what is to blame. And this could be a person, it could be an institution, it could be society in general. And the as much as possible, you want to make this someone they already don't like. So it could be the popular ones of the government, or it's the financial system, it's Wall Street, it's the pharmaceutical companies, it's the media. And you want to know your audience in this too. Like, so if your audience are Republicans and you blame it on the Democrats, if your audience are Democrats and you blame it on the Republicans, is if it's someone they already don't like, then they're they have an easy time shifting the blame to that to that person. So for example, if somebody is is sick and has been dealing with a disease for a long time, I could say that. What's really holding you back is that you haven't been addressing ABC thing about your body. And the reason for that, who is to blame, is that the pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know that there's an actual cure for their condition because they want you to keep buying drugs every single day for the rest of your life. Right. So I'm blaming the, the big pharma companies, which... Pretty much nobody likes the pharma companies, so that's an easy one to to blame, um, <laughs> no matter who my audience is. So it's like you're getting you're you're putting yourself on the same side as the prospect and putting it in terms of us versus them. So it's like you and me versus these pharma companies. Okay, so that's Q five. Q six is why now. This one is super important because people naturally don't like to make decisions. People tend to procrastinate. And so if you say, hey, you know, you can buy this thing and it's going to be available for the rest of the year. Well, then they're they're probably going to put it off because that's generally what people do. Because and this is a really, really bad trait, by the way, like successful people do not act this way. Um, it, I mean, everybody acts this way sometimes. That's not to totally true. But the, the more successful people will make decisions faster. They won't put it off. But most people will put it, just put everything off until they, they absolutely have no choice anymore. And so this is kind of the bane of every salesperson's existence is that you you present the offer and then they say, oh, well, I'll think about it. And so what, it, what it always happens is that they don't make a decision. They say, or even if they say they're going to, like, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Well, then tomorrow comes and then they, they're they just as uncomfortable doing it tomorrow as they were today. And so then they're like, oh, no, I'll push it off till later. And they just continue pushing it off till later forever and nothing ever happens. So if somebody tells you, like on a sales call, I'll think about it or I'll do it tomorrow like 95% of the time they don't do it. So you, you have to give somebody a compelling reason why they should act now and not put it off. So there's a bunch of reasons that you can do this. And the, the reasons have to be believable, right? Because if they think that you're lying to them, then you're, you're screwing yourself. So if you say that you have to buy right now because tomorrow this offer is no longer going to be available. Well, if people think that you're not telling the truth, then it's not going to work, right? So generally, there should be a good reason why the offer is not available. So for example, if you're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with people, you can say, "I'm I, this is one-on-one -on -one coaching, so I can only take on so many clients. And so I have a spot available right now, but... I, you know, I might not have that spot tomorrow because I can, I only have so much time in a day. I can't handle that many clients, right? So that's something believable because there's a real constraint. You really do have a constraint on your time. You can also put a, like an artificial constraint. So you can say that I'm, that I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this offer tomorrow. And if like people have to believe you. And if people, if you ever do that, by the way, you got to follow through with it, right? Like actually make the, if you say this is available today, but it's going to be gone tomorrow, 
then then make it unavailable tomorrow. Don't let anybody buy tomorrow. And then over time, people, at least people that are following you, will start to realize that when you say something, you actually mean it. You're not lying to them. <laughs> um, and then there's also reasons that you can give people to to buy or to to take action now that are that are like more internal. So I could say, for example, that think about. So somebody tells me that, oh, they want to think about it. And I could say, well, what if, think about like all the times that you've said that in the past, what has end up, ended up happening? Have you ever followed through with it? If you said that you want to think about it. So saying you're th going to think about it is just letting the opportunity go by. So basically it's now or never, you got to buy now. I'm not going to force you to buy now. But you and I both know that if you don't buy it right now, you're never going to. So you might as well just be honest with yourself and make a decision, yes or no. And I can talk to them about how the you know successful people make those decisions. And I can give quotes of successful people that say that you have to, have to be willing to make a decision, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a, a thing that I use in my ads a lot that I like is you may never see this ad again. So if you're interested, now is your opportunity. Right. Because that's true. I don't know how the ad, ad algorithm works, like if it's ever going to show them the same ad again. So there's a very good chance that they'll never get that opportunity again because they'll never see the ad again. OK, does that make sense? Give me a three in the chat if that makes sense. Now, where was I? Okay, Q7 is, why should I trust you? Right, especially if they've never seen you before, if they've never never watched any of your material, if they don't know anything about, and it could be your company, right? We talked about this last week about like, why should people trust you? And so what he met, recommends in the book is, three different is three different storylines so the first is i've been in your shoes so you talk about how in the past i was in the same situation as you were as you are now as your prospect is now so if you're selling acne medication you could say you know when i was 19 years old my face was covered in acne which is true, actually. I had, I had acne something terrible when I was 19 years old. But yeah, so I, my face was covered in acne. Uh, all the creams and medications and stuff didn't work. I felt embarrassed of myself and blah, blah, blah. And then I figured out this thing. And then my after I figured that, then then my acne went away. And that and now I'm so happy and I found the love of my life and and everybody loves me and I'm a celebrity and I'm a billionaire and, you know, whatever, like how great your life is now. But people trust you more because you show them that you've been in the same situation as them. Right. So this is ideal. If you can use this story, if you can't use this story because you haven't been in the person's shoes, the next best one to use is the Robin Hood story. So this is. I was like, I I noticed these people suffering and I couldn't bear to watch it any longer. And so I decided to do something about it. So this could be, I was like, I think he gave the example of somebody who worked on Wall Street. It's like, so I worked on Wall Street and I saw all of the corruption and how these these big billion dollar corporations were just stealing money left and right from unsuspecting people's retirement plans. And at a certain point, even though I was making a lot of money, I just couldn't bear to look at it any longer. And so I have to tell you this because my conscience won't let me stay silent anymore. Right. That's the Robin Hood story that I, I wasn't in your shoes, but. I have empathy for people like you, and so I'm I'm stepping in to do something about it. And then the third type, if you can't do either of the first two, is the 
the expert. So this is just, hey, here's why you should believe in me. This is like I was um, top of my class at Harvard and I have a PhD in whatever and I got this and this and this award and I did all these stuff. Um, so that's the, it, it still answers the question, why should I trust you, right? Because you have all of this expertise, but the, either of these two stories are actually better, right? Cause this is very much, very much logic based. Whereas these two are more emotional. Um, they're all logical actually, but this one, like the, the top, this one and this one are more emotional as well as logical, if that makes sense. Okay, so there are only 10 questions, by the way. So we're, we're nearing the end of this. The next question is, how does it work? Right, so you told them that there's this new mechanism or the new opportunity. So you want to explain how it works. So explain the science behind it or explain why it's why it's it's a, a good opportunity right so if i talk about how running youtube ads for businesses is a great opportunity because the whole world is trying to do facebook ads and it's super competitive over here but it's not competitive at all over here that's explaining how it works or in my like my data analyst program that i did in the past i had a um I would tell them about how, hey, these companies have these giant databases with more and more and more data, but they need a certain type of expert that can actually get it, come in and read the data. And that's that person is a data analyst. And it turns out that there aren't that many people that have data analyst skills. And so the that's why they're willing to pay a lot of money for these people called data analysts to come in and, and analyze their data. Right, so I'm explaining the new opportunity in a way that makes sense. And ultimately has them nodding their head and saying, this makes sense, right? That's that's the desired goal here. So they're nodding their head while listening saying, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then if you can use an existing belief that they already have. Right, like, like for example, well, if I'm talking about that Facebook ads are already super saturated, well, a lot of people probably already believe that. They might have even experienced it firsthand. So instead of trying to make them believe in something new, if I can tap into a thing that they already believe to begin with, then that makes it a lot easier. So Q9 is, how can I get started? So at this point, this is where you actually present your offer. So you tell them what it is that you have to, to sell and like what the bonuses are and how, it, and how it's gonna help them specifically. Uh, and in, notice by the way, that all of this, like questions one through eight, were all about the opportunity, right? And only now in question nine, are we actually getting into what we specifically offer, right? And so there's a lot that goes into building a great offer. And I'm not going to get into that today because this would be super long. But you want to you want to give your offer. And, and maybe I'll make a note of that to get into that later. Okay, so how can I get started? And then finally, the last question is, what do I have to lose? And that is, what do I have to lose if I don't take the offer, if I don't buy the product? Because people oftentimes are not really trained to think this way. So let's say that you're selling a, an, a course to lose weight and your course cost a thousand dollars if at this point they believe that your course will work for them you want to say but they if they'll probably be focused on the price tag it's like okay if i buy this course i'm going to lose a thousand dollars so you, what you want to direct their attention to is okay but 
what are you going to lose if you don't buy the course? Right. And so this is called the oops cost of inaction. Like what do they have to lose if they don't buy the thing or they don't take the action? So one way to do this is to frame it as two choices. So you can say, so at this point, you have two choices. Either you can just ignore everything that I said here and and keep living the way that you've always lived and or, or let's let's make this more explicit. Either you can not accept this offer and just keep on living this the way that you've always lived and keep gaining 10 pounds every single year and you know listen to your doctor tell you that that you're shaving years off of your life and repel the the woman of your dreams and and end up being a lonely miserable wreck and then spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in healthcare bills because you didn't take care of this issue now right and especially if you can put a monetary value on it so if i'm going to teach you how to do youtube ads for businesses and i can teach you how to make 10 grand a month let's say well then i could say well if you if you don't take my offer then you're giving up 10 grand a month, which is $120,000 a year, which if, you know, if you do that for 20 years, that's whatever, $2 million a year. Like, are you willing to give up $2 million a year? It's kind of obvious if it's a make money offer. It's a little less obvious if it's something that's not a make money offer, but if you can tie it to money in some way, such as by not losing this weight, you're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars in extra medical bills. Or if you don't take my course on how to make your wife happy, then you're probably going to end up spending 50 times as much on, on your divorce lawyer than you would have spent on this course now, right? So it's like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This $1,000 price tag on my course it's cheap compared to the cost of not taking it. So here are your two choices. Either you just let this problem continue and keep fighting with your wife and keep alienating your children and, and, um, and eventually get suckered into a divorce that costs you half of your assets plus a, whatever giant fee the, the lawyer chooses. Or the other choice is that you could you could invest a thousand dollars today. You could buy my course and watch your marriage turn from a hellscape into the happy experience that it was when you first started dating. Either way, the choice is yours, right? So you're saying you're showing what they have to lose if they don't take the choice. And then you're, but you're not like, you have to do what I say, you're saying the choice is yours, essentially. So you're giving them, like, you're, you're putting it back on their plate rather than, than like telling them what to do. So, okay, so that's it. Like, that is the whole framework. And so what you do when you go and write a sales letter, write a video, is you, you want to put some, like, some different think about like everything in, in terms of like bullet points that you can do under each one of these. So how is this different from every, everything else that I've seen? And so you can say, well, this uses YouTube ads instead of Facebook ads. And then um, it, it may be only, only be one thing. And then once in it for me, it's like, it's going to earn 10 K month or more. And you can, work remote from a computer and you can work for yourself, et cetera, right? So you want to just kind of list everything that you can under each one of these points before you go and actually write anything. And then, and you may or may not use all of the things that you wrote. And so once you have all that, then you actually start writing and you start with um, like, you start with how is this different? So I could start a sales letter talking about how maybe it's even my own story. It's like, well, I used to run a Facebook ads agency and I had a terrible time because everybody had already 
been approached by Facebook ads agencies a million times. And so I eventually had to give up and my life was terrible. Um, but then one day I realized that everybody was doing Facebook ads, but Facebook ads was not the only platform. And then I decided to do YouTube ads, right? So that would be like how I might start out showing how this is different than what they've seen. And then I could switch to what's in it for me. And then I started, and you could use your own story or you can just say it explicitly. Like, then I realized if you do this, you can earn 10K a month or more. You can work remote from a computer. You can work for yourself. You can set your own schedule, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and then like, how do I know this is real? And then you could find a, like a statistics of how much, how, like how many people are on YouTube, for example. And you could say, well, there are 100 million people that log into YouTube every single day. And YouTube, since YouTube is owned by Google, Google knows what people are searching for. So Google can actually put ads in front of the perfect customer. So YouTube is actually the best ad platform there is, right? So I'm like giving them good reasons to know that, that this is real. And then I just go through one by one and like I'm writing this out in a form that's all coherent that uses these bullet points that are these bullet points that I put under each question. Cool. So any questions on that? If not, I'm going to give you another homework assignment, which is to watch my YouTube ads mastery video and note every one of these questions. So I this is the same video I had you guys watch last week, but for this time, last week I was talking about proof. Now I want you to watch it and notice how I check off every one of these boxes because I actually created that video using this, this um, framework here. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to go and grab that page for you because I don't have it handy here. Just a second. Okay, and I will put that in the chat here and then... I guess I'll also put it in the document. Not that anybody actually reads these documents. Um, cool. So that's it. Any questions, guys? Anything Anything that I glossed over too fast and you didn't, didn't understand? Cool. Well, thanks, Christian. Well, with that, I will let you go and have a good week and see you here next week.